Released on August 8th, 2010, Daniel Lopatin's Chuck Persons Echo Jams Volume 1 is considered by many to be the first ever Vaporwave album. From its aesthetic direction to the style of sample slicing and looping, the chopped and screwed playings of Lopatin's one-time Chuck Person alias left a massive impact on the Vaporwave direction, and is rightly so considered to be one of the true grails of the genre. And today, I want to talk about it. If you're always on the hunt for interesting music, you've come to the right place for discovery, my friend. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn all notifications on so you can be here for our next deep dive. And one last thing real quick before we begin today's video, you can check out today's topic in written form over at Vapor95's Darknet blog, as well as get 15% off your order over at their awesome shop. The link that automatically applies the discount is in the description of this video down below. And with that being said, Let's dive in to some good old Echo Jams. To properly discuss Echo Jams and how it all came to be, I think it's best if we first take a look at the man who created the project in the first place, Daniel Lopatin. Born in 1982, Massachusetts' very own Daniel Lopatin was introduced to the world of music at an early age. Both of his parents came from musical backgrounds. His father was once in a garage rock band called The Flying Dutchman, and his mother was a classically trained piano player and music teacher. And because of this, Lopatin found a ton of musical influence right at home. He was surrounded by many of the works found in his father's music collection, mixes from local radio stations, video game soundtracks, as well as everything his mother taught him along the way. Heather Fair does a wonderful biography on Lopatin that I highly recommend giving a read if you're looking for a more intensive look on Daniel's beginnings and early career which I will leave a link to in the description of this video. As Daniel got older, he would go on to play synthesizer in bands and groups during his high school years. He eventually moved to Brooklyn, New York for grad school, and there he became involved in Brooklyn's underground noise music scene. Lopatin would begin releasing music under a number of different names and aliases, only to eventually take on the name 10 Tricks Point Never, a play on the name of a Boston radio station. Daniel's passion for keyboards, samplers, and sequencers has crafted a pretty impressive resume over the years. Many may recognize Lopatin for 2011's Replica, an absolute 10 Tricks Point Never classic. With samples ripped mostly from 1980s commercials, Lopatin provided ears with a dynamic journey from start to end. Moments like Submersible are heavy and bellowing, while other tracks like Child Soldier, are jittery and playful. He's able to craft such genuine emotion with these broken and jumpy sounds while building the album, ultimately presenting a beautiful palette of sensations for the listener. Eight years and much more music later, Lopatin would end up composing the original score to the 2019 anxiety-ridden crime thriller film Uncut Gems, and a year later even work with The Weeknd, producing and writing a couple of songs off of his album After Hours. Lopatin would also play a huge role in The Weeknd's latest album, Dawn FM. To think that someone who's working with The Weeknd and composed music for one of my favorite movies of all time was once making Vaporwave, even if it was only one time with Echo Jams, is still pretty mind-blowing to me. Lopatin's legacy in Vaporwave would begin in the late 2000s on his Sunset Corp YouTube channel. Angel, Nobody Here, and Demerol are considered to be some of the first ever true Vaporwave tracks, all also eventually making their way onto Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1. These are all still viewable on the Sunset Corp YouTube channel, which I will put in the description below as well, with Nobody Here even hitting over 2 million views as of the making of this video. Each piece features what Lopatin calls Echo Jams, chopped, screwed up, and sliced selections that take a bite right out of a sample, and pancakes that bite over and over to create this dizzying yet hypnotic sensation throughout a track's runtime with varying amounts of delay, reverb, echoing all over the place. Anybody can make echo jams due to their simplistic nature, and because of this, each echo jam's unique personality depends on what snippet from a sample the producer finds to be the juiciest to flip. Lopatin understands that because each producer has their own taste, there will always be an infinite amount of possibilities on how a sample can be used for an echo jam. Produced between 2009 and 2010, and released in the summer of 2010, Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 consists of two sides, tracks A1 through A8, and tracks B1 through B7. 
The album feels like a candy store of sounds, with chewed up samples from Toto to Ian Van Dahl and ELO to Janet Jackson. Lopatin really used a little bit of everything on this album. Hearing that intro track A1 rev up into the Africa sample by Toto is just so magical every time I throw this album on. Lopatin throws the sample back and forth like he's having a baseball catch with it and just submerges everything in this aquatic, thick shroud of effects and echoes and delays and all that stuff to quickly introduce us to this deep sea artwork world that is in the album cover. A2, or as we've come to know of it as Angel from the Sunset Corp uploads, features some of the more diverse sample chopping moments of the album. Nothing on the album is really revolutionary in regards to how Lopatin decides to pick and place where each sample chop goes. More of the focus on Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 is spent with the textures and hypnotic experiences found within the final result of the sample reworks, but A2's first couple of seconds does feature some of the more bouncier moments, I guess, of the sample chopping on the album. Fleetwood Mac's Only Over You bombarded with reverb, echoing, and obnoxious yet super tasteful flangers. And Lopatin continues this style of nostalgia-inducing, trippy, overlapping sample play throughout the rest of the tracklist. And to talk about each track individually feels a bit pointless in a way, since it's an album that kind of does the same thing throughout the entire runtime. And that's kind of the point of it anyway. There's a really nice range of genres explored throughout the sample choices Lopatin made in each track individually, but the glitched, almost broken concept that glazes over the entire project pretty much makes each track the same in a way. And it really works for a project like this because Lopatin takes the sweetest, most savory parts of the tracks he's working with and just loops them at nauseum. You know, he just loops that hook constantly and it puts you in this state. You know what, if you've heard the album, you already know what I'm talking about. And doing that pretty much throughout the entire album gives this thing its personality. Echo jams were done time and time again after this release, but nothing ever truly captured the same like broken magic that Lopatin did with this thing. Maybe he just knew how to hit our brains right with the perfect sample choices, I don't know, his wonderful editing and text dry, whatever it is, nothing ever really hits like Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1. On the visual side of things, we're given glitchy album artwork built up from bits and scraps of the Sega Mega Drive and Mega CD versions of the Echo the Dolphin video game. This cover is like a historical vaporwave art composition at this point. This and Floral Shop, of course, seem to be the most recognizable vaporwave classics from those who have at least heard of the genre once or twice, and for good reason. They both capture such a nostalgic tone, yet they feel so liminal and unnatural and like empty in a way, all themes that would be chiseled into the vaporwave aesthetic for years to come. The concoction of fragments on Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1's artwork is just so jarring yet cool at the same time, and just feels like a Game Shark cheat code gone wrong. The artwork really pairs well with the pancaking audio effect I mentioned earlier that Lobatin uses as a staple throughout the project. And just like the Echo the Dolphin video game itself, there is a sense of dread throughout the entire album, Lopatin taking happy pop songs and corrupting them through various amounts of delay, reverb, tape manipulation, while the video game gives you what should be a beautiful ocean world terrorized by an outside force. I've always looked at the broken art and sound of Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 as a message on the dangers of relying too much on nostalgia for happiness. The idea that we can sometimes have such a broken view of a romanticized past and how that affects us in finding significance in new experiences. There will always be discussion in virtually any community, topic, or subject on what people believe was the first to ever do it. While many in the past have sampled music in similar fashion to Lopatin's work here, the aesthetic and tone present within the entirety of Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 was so crushingly vaporwave in an almost sinister, purposeful way that I feel it's so hard to choose anything else other than this as the first ever for the genre due to the project's self-awareness in a time where no other relatable vaporwave releases were there to compare itself to. But today, I actually have longtime producer, DJ, and a great friend, Skeleton Lipstick, here with me 
to give his take on who he believes actually did Vaporwave first. So for me, Vaporwave as an artistic movement really begins with 18 Karat Affair, albums like 6040 or Gorgeous Fantasy. And while One of Tricks Point Never, the Echo Jams album, and James Ferraro and all of his work are extremely influential on the ideas and sounds and concepts that will appear in Vaporwave, a movement doesn't really begin until like-minded artists begin to group together and exchange ideas back and forth with each other. And in my opinion, Dennis was the first person to really synthesize all these ideas that were bouncing back and forth amongst a lot of like-minded artists. And, you know, when I saw his work come out and those records come out, I was like, well, this is the person who's really nailed down what I think we have all been reaching for and all been trying to say. You know, he was really the, um, the first person to collect all of the ideas that we had been gathering from things like, obviously, One of Tricks Point Never, obviously, um, Thunderphonics, Words of Canada, the Chill Wave movement, to gather all together these ideas and then just like produce a, an entire new mood for music. And so, 18 Carat Affair is where this all begins, and he was a peer, so it was somebody that you could speak to as well and exchange ideas with, like I said. And that's where a movement really begins, and that guy, uh, our friend Dennis, is the pinnacle of it, in my opinion. As of today, the only Lopatin sanctioned physical release of Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 came from the label The Curatorial Club on a limited edition cassette. A cassette which has once sold, according to Discogs, for $1,000. Wild. With the boom of vinyl and cassette releases becoming more and more available in the Vaporwave community in recent years, Echo Jams never received a true Lopatin sanctioned physical release beyond the original limited edition cassette back in 2010. And this is pretty understandable. There's some heavy samples on here that are quite distinguishable. And if Lopatin ever wanted to officially get all of this cleared for a truly sanctioned physical release, I'm sure it wouldn't even be worth it at this point. A number of bootlegs were released throughout the years, most notably the Vapor Tapes Ink Drop back in the day, if some of you remember that, which caused quite a stir when they were first revealed. I actually grabbed one of these things when it was first announced. I just saw it on Twitter, I think, and I just immediately was like, oh shoot, it's Echo Jams on a physical. How am I not going to pick this up? So I did, but only to see Lopatin kind of shoot it down a little while later. I don't really remember the whole story of Vapor Tapes Inc. back in the day, but I do remember them dropping or at least announcing that they were going to be doing Echo Jams vinyl as well as like some blank Banshee bootlegs or something. I don't even know if any of those saw the light of day, but yeah, I have this weird and wacky cassette version of Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1. I do like the glittery cassette shell though, it's, it is kind of cool. I also have an unofficial lathe cut record of the album released on Groovy Dude Records. These were released at a super limited amount as well a couple of years ago. I don't remember the exact amount, but I do remember seeing the post drop on Reddit and it genuinely felt like the label was releasing this for the pure sake of fans and collectors. Just wanting to see Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 on vinyl. They were like really upfront and honest about it that it wasn't uh, sanctioned from what I remember. I love the transparent look of the lath cut, lathe cut. I, to, to this day, I still don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know if it's lathe or lath cut, whatever. We're going we're gonna to stick with lathe cut. Right, let me know in the comments if I'm saying it right. I don't know. <laughs> and the artwork, it looks really rich and high res here too, which is a super nice touch. Bootlegs and unofficial releases are always weird and an interesting subject in general, but this one just felt simply made as an homage to the classic Vaporwave album. And of course, it's just cool being able to spin some echo jams on my record player. In regards to visual material, and this one's actually really cool, I didn't know about this until I started doing the research for this video, a handful of tracks from Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 were also originally used on Memory Vague, Lopatin's 2009 audiovisual project that was released as a limited edition DVD in June of 2009 by the label Root Strata. With Lopatin providing the music and Maxwell August Croy the design and layout of the project, Memory Vague served up a concoction of found footage material like commercials, animation, and music videos, all edited by Lopatin in Windows Movie Maker. The project contains the Sunset Corp U2 music videos Lopatin uploaded like Angel and Nobody Here, as well as several other tracks from the Echo Jam project, all adding up to 11 tracks in total. 
Memory Vague is considered to be another pioneering piece in the vaporwave genre due to its aesthetic tone and manipulation of 80s source material. The DVD is also pretty hard to come by as well, one selling for over 100 bucks on Discogs. So with an album name like Echo Jams Volume 1, it was only obvious that people were eventually going to ask, well, where's Volume 2? With it now being over a decade since the release of Echo Jams, a Volume 2 never came to be, unfortunately. When asked about a possible Volume 2 in a Reddit AMA post from October 2013, Lopatin replied with, I have multiple volumes of Echo Jams in the crypto tank set to defrost in the distant future. And I absolutely love that. <laughs> I imagine Daniel played with a ton of samples along the way while creating, you know, the Echo Jams. And I'm sure there was a bunch that didn't hit right for him or whatever it was. Who knows how many of them he has or had that are just half finished on like, I like to think of like them just sitting on this frozen hard drive, thousands of feet under the sea in some like metallic facility with a giant window overlooking the ocean. Yeah. Some like Dr. Evil looking shit. That's where I picture all of these echo jams that we never got to hear. That's where they're sitting. So looking back at the project and its legacy, it's still really awesome to see how many people still to this day pay respects to the echo jam style in their own work. One of the first things I can think of is Echo 10, a tribute to Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1, which celebrated the 10 year anniversary of Lopatin's work with a massive 51 track compilation project featuring over 30 artists and creators. Originally released in 2020 on the label Virtual Dream Club, the project would get re-released about a year later on Tiger Blood Tapes as a complete version, this time with a really sweet limited edition double cassette tape box set. All profits given towards the cassette purchase went towards the Water.org Foundation, a foundation aimed to help people get access to safe water and sanitation around the world. I'll be sure to put a link to that in the description below as well for those who want to learn more. Even my favorite Vaporwave release of 2021, which if you haven't watched that video yet, go check it out, Ghost's Incantation has a heavy influence from Lopatin's Echo Jams, even having a track on there titled Echo to No One. And the big question, do I think Lopatin will ever come out with a volume two? Honestly, nah, I don't think so. I actually think it's kind of cool that there's only a volume one. This concept that maybe people who stumble upon the release, who don't know anything about it or its legacy, just finding it for what it is, possibly trying to search for a Echo Jams volume two after finishing the album, only to completely fail at ever finding the follow-up. Or if they do, they find like fan-made creations of what Echo Jams Volume 2 could have been. And that just adds to the whole concept of Echo Jams anyway, which is just awesome. That idea of lost nostalgia and the irony in those who try and recapture those same exact feelings in their present day living, it just doesn't exist and it never can. And Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 is literally that. The obnoxious behavior of Daniel Lopatin's one-time project and its dedication of flooding you with a nostalgia overdose serves as a great reminder, at least for me personally, to find inspiration in nostalgia, but not necessarily try to recapture it exactly, because it could be very broken. Echo Jam's Volume 1 is an album I really don't listen to frequently either. I kind of get sick of it after a full listen, honestly, and I think that's just another ironic beauty of the album's disposability. I get that nostalgia blast from it, you know, but after a while, even I too just want to listen to something less intoxicating and more structured in a traditional sense. You know, Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 is really unique in that way because it just genuinely feels disposable in all the good ways. Yeah, like Pat had said before, Chuck Person's Echo Jams is no doubt in my mind a staple within the Vaporwave genre. Before we had, you know, this, Vaporwave didn't really have a home to reside in once the sun set and all the scary monsters came out looking for food. Sure, we had songs from the great 18 Carat Affair, and the songs he made spans all the way back to 2008 when six-year-old me was watching Boomerang and catching friggin' Pokemon on my black DS. Unfortunately though, those songs never really caught air like Echo Jams did. Two years later in 2010, Echo Jam served as a bold move into a genre that hadn't yet been fully cemented. 
Surprisingly, a lot of that comes from its means of production. <laughs> or lack thereof. Music in that day and age was known for their high budget, flashy mixing, and crystal clear quality. This was due partly to the rise of video streaming services like YouTube and the rise of easily accessible technology like iPhones. Unlike this type of music, Echo Jam stood out by having literally none of that. The beauty from this album, however, comes from how jarring and downright crazy it presents itself as. In 2022, where Vaporwave is commonplace, we've come to expect this type of practice. Whether it's the influential Infinity Frequencies in their computer trilogy with its notable looping, or it's the sinister Death's Dynamic Shroud with its chopped and scary sampling. While both artists are obviously amazing, they weren't the OGs of the genre, if you will. Echo Jam stands out because this had never been attempted before in such a far out trajectory. While the music sounds human, it doesn't feel human. If you were walking on a beach one day back then only to find this cassette half buried in the sand, when you got home, cleaned it off, and played it, chances are you'd be confused as to what you're listening to when that amazing track A1 began playing. Three things would have most likely crossed your mind. One, is this cassette broken? Two, if it isn't, who would dare to make something like this that sounds broken? And three, despite this, why does this actually sound really good? That's because since the beginning of modern music, we've trained ourselves to believe that music must sound proper and perfect. Everything must flow well, everything must sound crystal clear, and everything must be socially presentable, or God help you. When you suddenly have an album that's main focal point is being chopped up, sampling artists and lower the bit rate into the single digits while simultaneously going against every single cardinal sin in the modern day musical industry all the while it sounds surprisingly good then that's an album worthy of praise with an amazing selection of tracks beautiful album artwork and a legacy that allowed for an entire genre of music to follow it if you haven't checked out chuck person's echo jams as of yet you absolutely have to sooner rather than later. Thank you for having me, Pad. I'll give it back to you. So I wanna know what you gotta say. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on the Chuck Person's Echo Jams Volume 1 project, as well as any other artists, albums, songs, genres, you name it, that you'd want me to explore in a future video on this channel. Check out my video here that explores more beginnings of the vaporwave genre, or here for a deep dive into Japan's most dangerous band, and I'll see you over there. Cheers and thank you so much for watching. Much love, your boy, and we'll talk soon. Pad Chennington.